Hello, my name is Asai Bonin. I'm a product manager in the Microsoft 365 platform side of the uh, Microsoft. And in this video, we will have a look on how do we set up your our SharePoint framework development environment. So this is one of a series where we go through of setting up the needed configuration in a tenant. We will set up the development environment and we will do the first the implementation of SharePoint framework code. Let's dive right into it. So here we have a Windows 10 environment and we don't actually have anything installed on this one. Uh, so if I go uh, at remove programs, uh, we can pretty much see that it's a, a clean Windows 10 installation, no additional tooling or nothing uh, installed. Now, word of a warning, uh, if you have an Obviously, you might have a laptop where you have a lot of lot of stuff already installed, and you might have some older versions of the of the Visual Studio Code or the packages and so on installed. So that, that might cause some, uh, let's say, challenges. Um, so we're starting with the clean clean windows. So it, this looks relatively easy to set up and quite fast to set up. Um, also, as we are, uh, it's currently April 2022. Um, we are using SharePoint Framework 1.14, and SharePoint Framework 1.14 works with the Node.js 14. And Node.js 14 is no longer the default thing what we're downloading from the Node.js uh, Node organization. You can actually see the, a bit more complicated way of doing things uh, and installation. But let's actually get started on this. So let me actually move to the Node.js uh, site. And as said, uh, we can see that the latest version uh, or the default version from the site is 16.14. Now, it's really, 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 really important uh, that you double check always uh, from uh, our SPFX uh, documentation uh, which version is the one which we should be actually using. So in our development environment documentation in here, where you can see the video as well, but that's the older version of this video, uh, we're always calling out what is the right version you can actually use. So starting from 1.15 as an example, the right version will be V16. But for now, as we're recording this in April 2022, the 16 would be too new. So that means that we actually need to go a bit more back in the time, unfortunately, and to download the Note 14 version to make everything work without problems. So we need to now go other downloads. Let's actually go in there. I will scroll down. That's still Note 16. So that's not the right thing to do. So I will go uh, uh, previous releases, and now that's a bit complicated thing. So let me actually go back in here, and let's go all download options. So we can actually get to this Node.js distribution folder structure. A uh, bit of a scary thing, uh, might be a bit of a scary looking thing, but it's not actually that scary. So we can go one step up, and then we'll need to find here uh, the one point, uh, sorry, the 14 version of the Node.js. I'm going to scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, and the latest version of 14, which is 14.18.2. Dun, 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 dun. Well, 14.19.1 uh, is apparently the latest version on the 14. So this bit of a bummer um, and a challenging thing to then define the right version, but hopefully this video helps on that. And again, if the version which we say that is the required version matches what the Node.js has on the front page. Oh, that was, oh, there we go. Thank you, Bing, for understanding that I was trying to go to the Node.js. So if this version, uh, the major version is matching what we're saying in the documentation, then you can just download the major version. But again, because we're saying that it has to be 14 and this uh, 16, we need to go then to the actual downloading the latest version of 14 version to make that happen. So I'm going to here download the MSI um, because that's the easiest way to install that. It's going to download the MSI uh, to the download folder of the computer. And that's not going to take too long. And then we're going to do the installation of Node. So we are ready to go uh, starting from there. So let me actually get dun -dun -dun. downloading. Now it's verifying the package. Now there's uh, too much stuff. Let me actually go in here and let's go to the downloads. And uh, it is that one over there. So let me, oh, actually it's either one of those. Uh, these are all the versions which I downloaded previously. So let's not worry about them. And that's the one which I just downloaded. Um, so we can actually install that. 
So let's get that one installed. This is simple as clicking next. Uh, I will accept the license agreement without reading that as we always do. Uh, and then next, next, next. Checking that all of these settings are enabled. So that's really good. And I we can click the automatic install necessary to, and this isn't technically required, but this will make sure that there's a chocolate, there's additional settings and uh, tooling available on the background. Um, and that will though, make the installation take a, a bit longer, uh, but it will make sure that we have the ready to go tooling already in the background. There's gonna be this administrative prompt. I'm gonna click yes, and that's gonna then start the installation. And this will take a while, so we're gonna speed up the video at this point uh, until we are fully completed on the, all of the installation steps uh, after clicking the next. So let's come back on when that's completed. Good, so now the node chairs, is completed, but as we're clicking finish, um, since we checked that checkbox to install that additional tooling, it will actually start the installation of those additional tools. So this will uh, this will take a bit even longer. So let's click uh, enter and any key to actually start the installation. And, the, and again, let's speed up the video of making the installation to be a bit faster than it actually is in reality. Good, so now the installation is completed. That did actually take quite a long time, quite a few minutes. Um, there was a certain section on that installation where it actually just waited and waited and waited, but patience is a virtue, like they say. Now, now that the node has been installed, we know that the NPM package has been installed and we can actually start uh, doing other installations. But before we do that, let's actually go in the, in the browser. Let's forget about that uh, distribution folder. Let's go in here and say download VS Code. So we're gonna install the, the Visual Studio Code, which will be our development uh, tooling. Of course, you could use any other uh, JavaScript, TypeScript development tooling as well. Visual Studio Code is just really, 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 really good on this stuff. So let me actually download the Windows version on this. It's gonna start downloading that should be relatively fast and let's actually open the file so we can get the visual studio code installed uh, on this machine hello open file there we go and we're going to accept that and we're going to install that on the basic settings that's fine uh, one thing what i personally really 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 like uh, is the open with code action in the visual studio explorer file context menu and in the directory context menu those are really really convenient settings so you can right click a folder and say open in visual studio code and poof it will open that uh, as a tooling or as a working space so let's install that that should be going fine doesn't take too long to get installed and then we move into the actual installing the needed packages from NPM, uh, NPM side of the house using the NPM packaging manager, which does not take too long either. I'm not gonna launch Visual Studio Code because there's no need for that. What was that last edition of settings? Yes, I know that I double clicked that twice. Okay, so now we're good from a browser perspective. That is a good start. And let me actually start a command line. Uh, in my case, it's the Windows uh, PowerShell is in here. It, it's just a command line tool. You could use term, Windows Terminal, command line, whatever is your preferred option. And uh, now that we, if we do execute the node dash D, we can see that we have 14.19.1 version installed of the node 14, because again, SPFX 1.14 requires node 14. By the way, that version equal version matching is just a coincidence, nothing to do with that. And the other thing which we will always check is the NPM. So we're running NPM 6.14.16 in this case. Um, again, depending on when you're installing Node and which version you installed, there might be a bit of a different version uh, which you install. Now, what we wanna do now is install Gallup, install Yeoman Generator um, and the, the the Yeoman, and then we're gonna install the SharePoint Framework Yeoman Generator. Uh, so three different installations. I'm gonna do this one by one. Technically, you could actually compile them to a single command as we're showing uh, within the uh, documentation, but we'll do this one by one. Gallup CLI, that's, that's global. It's a really important thing to under remember, put the global there so that we're installing the Gallup to the global side of the NPM, not on the, on the locally on the folder side. Uh, so it's available in any, any location as as we execute code within this computer. Doesn't take too long to complete. 
Excellent. So now the, uh, the, the Gallup has been installed. Gallup is our task management tooling, so it has to be in place. We want to actually install a Yeoman. So let's do npm install a yo that's that's global and that's going to then install yeoman yeoman is basically our templating tooling uh, which the sharepoint framework is then using to generate the project structures again let's speed up the video to save some time in here Excellent. So now the Yeoman generator has been installed. I'm going to a bit uh, resize this so, because I want to show you uh, one thing uh, related on the SharePoint framework Yeoman generator. So if you do now npm view and Microsoft uh, generator SharePoint, just trying to learn how to write that after all of these here are still having typos. So as we use the view command, which we don't explicitly call out in the documentation, this is just good to know, uh, we can actually see the details related on uh, the Share, uh, SharePoint Framework Human Generator in the NPM uh, systems. So the latest version, uh, which is the latest released version or GA version is 1.14 at this moment. Again, depending on when you're watching the video, it might be a newer version. So please always check the documentation as the most up-to-date uh, guidance. And then the next version is the preview version of the upcoming feature, feature with already some pre, uh, preview capabilities. So at this moment of a time, uh, we already have a beta one version of SharePoint Framework 1.15 available, uh, which includes includes also additional improvements and adjustments. So this is a cool way of then using the tags on the latest and next. So with, as we're installing now, npm install Microsoft, it is so hard to write these things, generator SharePoint. I could do something like latest and that will then always install the latest version in here. To be fair, the latest is something which will get always installed the D by default as well, because it's mapping mapped uh, to the latest published version. But if I would like to do a, a preview install, I would stay here next, and that would be the latest preview installation. In this particular case, it would be 1.15. Hopefully it makes sense. But in our case, let's actually get rid of that and do dash dash global. So we install the SharePoint framework to this computer and we can finally start creating actually code after this one in another tutorial though. Um, so this is going to again take a while, not too much time, again depending on when your computer is versus data connectivity and all of that stuff. But let's speed up the video to complete the installation of this as well. Good. And now the installation is completed. So we are technically ready to go. So one thing what we also mentioned uh, in the tutorial, which might be a bit confusing, but there's a clarification in the text if you, if you are reading that, is that you could actually run this Gulp uh, Trust Dev Cert uh, at this point. Now, you cannot execute this in this folder uh, because this only works in a SharePoint Framework project. So but it's a one-time execution. And that's now the bit of a confusing part. So one time in the machine where we're installing uh, or which we're using for development purposes, we will need to execute the trust dev cert command. Um, the thing is though, we need to have the project structure available to be able to do that. So we can actually, um, in this tutorial series, we kind of then next create the project based on the tutorial and documentation and then we can execute that command to make sure that the local host can be accessed from SharePoint online because that's what we're going to do as we start debugging and testing our code and hosting that in a, in a SharePoint online. But other than that, and that's all we're going to do in this video, so hopefully that's useful. Mm -hmm.